This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From website and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. More on this later. What's up guys? Salut, this is Alex. Today is all about crème brûlée. And trust me, I want to make it perfect. Nothing will be acceptable below perfect. That's the new standard. So I'm thinking a brittle, super thin layer of caramel on top that just crack when the spoon hits it. I want a custard that is silky, smooth. I want hot and cold sensation. I want the full Monty, okay? Now, obviously I get it, I'm not a pastry chef, so that is all easier said than done. However, I do have a little asset up my sleeve. You see, in the previous episode, I visited Chef Laurent at a restaurant called Au Petit Riche here in Paris. This very talented guy happens to make, allegedly, the best crème brûlée there is. It doesn't get any better. Now, during my visit, not only did I taste it, but I also witnessed the whole making process in the kitchen. I've seen it all, and I want to share everything that I saw with you. So, why don't we start with the ingredients? So, I'm afraid I'm not gonna do a better job at grams and precise proportion than I usually do, but I'm gonna give you something more valuable. Ratios that work every time. That recipe works like this. One part milk, five parts cream, one part egg yolks, one part sugar. That's how you make the custard. And now obviously you just need some brown sugar for the end. Pop, 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 pop. I almost forgot something. Hold, hold on a second. To flavor that custard, you need vanilla. From my visit at Au Petit Riche with Chef Laurent, I know that using a real fresh pod of vanilla is key to that dessert. I went to three different grocery stores. None of them had anything close to a vanilla pod. Finding a vanilla pod is already very complicated. Finding a good vanilla pod is almost impossible. These are the best I was able to find, and yet, visually, they are pretty tough. This is borderline dead to me. The ones at the restaurant, I don't know, they were plump, they were fatty, they were full of essential oil. This, now it does smell good, but I'm thinking oh, it should be fine. It, it should always be better than just using vanilla extract anyway. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine, Alex, okay? What could possibly go wrong with this? It's gonna be fine. Yesterday, I came to the studio and I made some vanilla milk. I cut a vanilla pod lengthwise and then I scraped all the seeds from it. I've placed it in hot milk to infuse, plus the pod itself, and I've let that cook for a few minutes before I placed the whole thing in the fridge overnight. This is the milk I have been infusing overnight. It doesn't smell super strong. Let me give it a, a little try super quick. Not exactly the effect I was expecting, to be honest. I'm like, I'm genuinely disappointed. By the flavor I'm getting. I'm getting as much milk flavor as I'm getting vanilla. So what is wrong? The vanilla pods that I use. I don't feel like they were exactly the same as the guy used in the restaurant. These were the only vanilla pods I was able to find. Of course I could order them online and wait three weeks, but I can't afford to spend three weeks doing this. I need them now. They still have loads of flavor. But it seems like I'm not, I'm not able to extract that flavor properly. The main flavor compound of vanilla pods is called vanillin. Well, it turns out that flavor compound doesn't dissolve so well in fat and milk is just water and fat. Not optimal so far. Out of curiosity, I've been looking at how industrials extract vanillin. Industrial vanillin extraction is performed in a mix of pure 
pure ethanol and water. In my world, that's called store-bought alcohol. I think we should... Uh... <laughs> okay, so let's just add a bit of alcohol. By the way, the reason why I went for vodka, it's simply because I wanted something neutral that wouldn't affect the overall flavor too much. I think that's plenty. Not trying to get drunk, okay. Okay, let's talk about today's sponsor. Squarespace. Squarespace has the tool you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. Whatever you sell, Squarespace has merchandising features to make your products look their best online. Something I've noticed and that I love to push is that Squarespace makes it easy for chefs and creators to monetize content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member arrears, you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by setting access to gated content like video classes, online courses, or newsletters. So check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash French guy and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. A few hours later, if color is any connected to flavor, we are definitely extracting something over here. It smells complex. It doesn't smell like, like unidimensional. It smells like uh, multidimensional. <laughs> this is pretty strong in vodka, but I've got a pretty bold vanilla flavor in my mouth right now. <laughs> Please excuse this little mandatory digression. Now let's just continue with the recipe. Five parts of cream, one part milk, one part egg yolks. I reckon I need at least six egg yolks for this. Now for good measure, I'm also gonna add a bit of white just for structure purposes. Okay, voila. I just wanna mix things. I don't wanna whisk them up. I don't wanna incorporate air. I want a delicate yet silky clean, no bubbles texture in the end. That's plenty. Sugar. I'm gonna go with a bit less than one part sugar. I'm using white powdered sugar instead of brown sugar just because it dissolves easier. The reason why I did not mix the egg yolk with sugar to start with is that I didn't want to cook the egg because this tends to cook the egg. As soon as the sandy grainy vibe is gone, you're good to go. Now the moment we've all been waiting for I am very, very tempted to drink this. I shouldn't, though. Now I am obviously gonna sieve our little homemade vanilla extraction. It's almost like I'm doing something wrong. But it, it should be right. There was a beautiful change in terms of color. Just got darker. There's a bit of a caramel vibe going on already. So I know I'm not supposed to do this because there are eggs involved. But I'm gonna give it a try. Now this tastes amazing. There is an undeniable, unmistakable flavor. Vanilla. Maybe a hint of vodka, but less, less, less than previously. So I'm gonna place this in the fridge to chill and then we'll tackle the next step. about cooking and start with the cooking vessel. This is the dish that I'm going to be using, the ramekin, just because I'm a fancy boy, okay, and I want to make that dish perfectly. Now, 
You don't have to use this. I've got other options for you. This could be a good option. This is a shallow, like, soup plate. If you don't fill it up all the way to the edge, I think it could be a pretty good alternative for a creme brulee ramekin. Whether you go for, like, the OG creme brulee ramekin or just for a nice alternative, uh, you gotta keep in mind that the width is important, okay? It needs to be shallow, but it needs to be wide. You want a nice, wide, substantial layer of caramel. If you've got a small ramekin that is deep, you're missing up the whole point. The cream is very rich, so you can't have loads of it. The caramel is very brittle, very light, very crispy, so you want some of it. Clear? Okay, next. Now, for the oven, you want to go low and slow, about 100 degrees. Celsius. You want to cook this for at least an hour and a half. Another thing you want is moisture inside your oven. This is going to prevent a skin from forming atop of these beautiful little creme brulee. And I think it's also going to make the whole heat a little more even in that oven. We are, we've got some, some sort of a situation over here. I've been cooking them for about an hour, 45 minutes. They look a little too wobbly to my taste. I'm guessing with cold, they might just set up, so. It's gonna work! No, it's not gonna work. It's gonna fail, it's gonna work, it's gonna fail. This is killing me. Set. Set completely set. I wasn't worried at all. It's completely set. Look at this. Oh, it's set, but it's delicate. <laughs> Can't wait to try this. It only means one thing. This is ready for the next step. And boy, is it a big step. It's definitely a vibe, okay? There's something happening here. It's almost like walking on thin ice. You never know when it's gonna break. Okay, without further ado, shall we? Oh man, c'est super good. I'm mixing French and English. That's when you know the, the food is really good. It's a set custard, but it only holds its shape on the plate, but in the mouth, it just, it's gone. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Brittle, crispy caramel on top, and then the silky, soft, smooth custard underneath. Slightly warm top and the cold under layer. 
I don't think it's the caramel top that is the most complicated. I think the challenge in that dessert has more to do with the overall balance. Don't make it too sweet, get enough vanilla flavor. You don't want too much caramel, but if you don't get enough, it's not going to be creme brulee, is it? And in the end, even the mass of creme brulee that you end up with matters. You can't have a plate this big, this deep. No, you can't. That's why it's great to have like a dish that is shallow, but still pretty wide, so, so you maximize the surface. You got a good amount of caramel, but not too much cream, because it still is a very rich cream. It really is a simple yet quite exquisite dessert. I'll make sure to leave a full recipe in the description below so that you guys can replicate that. I'm gonna turn all the lights off, sit in the dark, and eat the rest of that creme brulee. It's almost like a, a me time, okay? I hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye. Salut.